good Thank sign. Thank you. That is, is a good sign. That is a good sign. Good morning. There we go. It is good to see you and welcome to worship for this uh, February the 19th. A warm welcome to all who are worshiping online and who are joining in. It is good to be together again and um, it's funny when you come in and it's quiet. We've got um, Ron and Stuart and Marion and Megan are going to lead the music today, and it's, it's just so quiet. We're going to have to put some music over the system, I think, just to, to make it uh, feel um, more alive when we're first coming in here. But uh, got great music coming up uh, this morning in the service. So it is good to be back um, this morning. We had a, um, a good week at the worship conference, and uh, when we were going, I had a couple people ask me if we were going to see Wendell Kimbrew uh, when we were there. There you go. There's the picture evidence that uh, we saw Wendell, and uh, we, he led a couple of worship services, and we went to a couple of workshops. Stuart went to a couple more than I did because he did some guitar stuff. Uh, with Wendell, so it was good to be there. We had amazing worship and to be reconnected with Wendell and some others, and uh, we've got some ideas that we'll be bringing back and sharing with you. We're going to sing one of Wendell's songs uh, at the end of the service today. Lent is coming up and coming up so quickly, and uh, so I just want to remind you of some of our Lent services and activities that are coming up on Wednesday at 11 will be here in the sanctuary and we're joining together with St. Andrew's Court Credit, Dixie, Arendelle and us to do an Ash Wednesday service. This will be, um, you know, a shorter service and it's just, it's a very meaningful way to start the Lent season to be able to come and just have some quiet and um, just a reflective kind of time. So I hope you'll consider coming and joining us for that service. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Lent, and so we will be sharing in the Sacrament of Holy Communion in that service. And there will be a special afternoon service at St. Andrew's Port Credit, two o'clock in the afternoon. And um, again, the four churches are doing this together, and we're especially doing this for those who have trouble getting out in the morning. Everyone is welcome, of course, to come, um, but we're especially thinking of those who 
find the mornings just a bit too early uh, to get out. So please spread the word and invite people to Port Credit uh, St. Andrews for that service. It will be a time of, reflect, of refreshment and um, conversation after the service. So have you ever wondered how it is that Jesus dying on the cross saves you? Be honest. I have. <laughs> it can be confusing. We read different things and we're not quite sure. Well, I've got the book for you. We're going to do, um, and again, the four congregations are doing this um, together. We're doing a book called Savior, What the Bible Says About the Cross. The author um, is a really, he's a clear writer. We're going to listen um, each time to a video as well by the author. And um, he is a really great speaker as well. So there'll be time of conversation afterwards. And as always, you can either participate in the conversation or you can sit and listen. So don't be shy. Um, we're starting here on Monday, the 27th at 1.30. Thank you for helping me. Um, and then there are our times on the Wednesday online and then Thursday morning at St. Andrews Port Credit. So sign up for the one that works for you, but it'll be a, it'll be a good uh, conversation. All right, annual meeting. Sunday, March the 5th, and I hope you'll put that in your calendar and make a point of being here. We're actually going to do something different this year so that those who can't get out can still be part of the meeting. We're going to worship through our annual meeting, and it's going to be beautiful. It'll be worship, but we'll get our um, business done, and then we're going to go and have lunch in the hall. So plan to be here for that. It's uh, important stuff around... Um, where we are and where we're going. The annual reports are out in the hallway, so please pick one up before you go. There's lots of good reading and some wonderful pictures um, from this last year there. I am looking for um, some bakers for the annual meeting. We're going to have lunch, but we thought if we could get a few people to bring in some sweets, then that would um, cover off dessert. There's sign up out there. So, we've had a number of people asking, and you would have read this in my email that went out on Friday. A number of years ago, for those that don't know, we sponsored a refugee family from Syria to come, and uh, the al Ramadan family have come, and they have been just so integrated into Canadian culture, and they're now Canadian citizens, in fact. And... Um, so people have been asking about Alia's family who remains in Syria. And this continues to be a uh, problem for them. She has sent me pictures. We couldn't get them off my phone, so I can show you to them at uh, coffee time. They did not live in an apartment building, but they, they lived in a home. And the homes that her family that are still there, they've all been destroyed. So we've got some pictures of what their living arrangements are like now. And so um, <clears throat> Session decided on Tuesday night that for those who wish to, we will take up a special offering and um, just need to mark it so that we know it's for Alia. Um, Hussein has figured out how to actually get the money directly to her family there. He's got a connection and because um, the funds flowing into Syria are a little slow. And so um, we do, for those who are interested and would like to help, we will gladly accept uh, offering and to go and to help her family. All right, let's just take a deep breath. We come today to worship our triune God, Creator, Son, and Spirit. This candle that we light week after week reminds us that Christ's light shines into the world, in and through us, and even in the darkest times. 
Christ's light shines and we get to be part of that light going into the world. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. How blessed are we when we meditate on God's teachings. Let us praise God with attentive minds and eager spirits. So let us worship God and praise God's holy name. We are going to begin our time of worship today by singing, Here I Am to Worship. It's okay. Because <laughs> um, I couldn't hear your guitar coming through the system, so that's why okay. we were um, just checking that out for a minute. But let's come and pray. God of all life and each life, you are the light of minds that seek to know you. You are strength for those who seek to serve you. You reveal truth to those who search for you. In worship, we pause in your presence, resting from our work and our responsibilities. We pause from our worries and our distractions. We come to enjoy your presence 
and praise you for the gift of life in Christ and in creation. Receive our prayers and our praise this day, for we open our hearts in love and loyalty to you. God, who is our all in all, you call us to choose life and to walk in your ways, but we are so tempted so often by shortcuts and easy solutions you ask us to turn from anger and settle our differences, but we cling to grievances and point fingers at others. You ask us to trust you, but we prefer so often to look to things in this world for our reassurance. And as a result, we end up being needlessly shaken and afraid. Forgive us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the paths that you set before us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. These words of love and forgiveness are given to us. God invites us to choose life and to find the blessing that comes from following God's ways. Accept God's gift of forgiveness and choose new life. Forgive one another and discover the peace that comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to sing again. Um, you might remember if you're here a couple of, about a month ago actually probably, we introduced a new version of The Lord's My Shepherd by Stuart Townden. And we're going to sing that again this morning. Please rise and let's sing this together. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you Your 
Thank you so much for leading our music this morning. I love that version of Psalm 23. It just, and I've needed that this week, it um, just is this calm and it just fills us. So thank you so much for leading that. We're going to turn now to God's word and Ruth is going to read our scripture lessons today. Please join me in the prayer for understanding. God of word and wisdom, your spirit inspired the authors of scripture with faithfulness in their day. Send us your Holy Spirit as we listen to the scriptures in our own time. Give us fresh understanding and a vision of how to live out your wisdom in the example of Christ your living word. Amen. Please join me in the uh, Psalm 62 responsively. Uh, You'll find this on page 458 or on the screens. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. Yes, alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. That power belongs to God. Belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. The New Testament lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 23, and is on page 927 of the Pew Bibles. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as fleshly, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still fleshly. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, Are you not fleshly and behaving according to human inclinations? For when when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not all too human? What then is Apollos? 
What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and each will receive wages according to their own labor. But we are God's co-workers working together. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is holding on it, is building on it. Let each builder choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, etc., the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If the work that someone has built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a wage. If the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. So let no one boast about people, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Ruth. How many of you are following? If you, I'm not going to ask if you're following along in the Bible. It doesn't. If you were, though, you would have noticed that some of the words were slightly different in your pew Bible than what Ruth is reading. That is because there is an updated edition to the NRSV. So they have gone back and they've looked at the original language and how it was translated for the NRSV. And there are some of those words, the words that you noticed were different, where they kind of went, you know what, that's maybe not the best way to say that, to get across what the original writer was trying to convey. And so they've changed some of those words a little bit. There aren't very many places, but there are some spots where you'll notice that, wait a minute, you're following along and then it's like something a little different. Those are the spots to notice though and to think about, oh, I wonder why did they choose that new way of saying this and what does that then say to me a little differently than what was in the original? So that's why if you're reading along and you bump up against something that's a little different from what we're reading from the pulpit, we're using the updated version um, from the pulpit. Speak to you in the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love a good gardening metaphor, especially at this time of year. Ah, thoughts are starting to go to gardening and preparing and, uh, 
just getting my hands in the soil and seeing what can be created and what will come up this spring. Even in this odd winter where it really hasn't been cold enough and we haven't had enough uh, snow, I'm still kind of anxious for spring and uh, getting my hands into that garden. Today we find Paul using a gardening metaphor to help people understand the role that people play as we garden for God. I love that Paul uses a couple of different metaphors in this section of his letter to the people in Corinth. To me, it shows just how much he cares about them and how concerned he is for them and how much he wants them to understand what is foundational to their faith. Now, before we get to gardening for God, we find Paul back in a place where he began earlier in this letter. He's addressing once again the divisions and the quarrels that are going on amongst the people. He's once again calling them out for aligning too closely with human teachers, Apollos and himself specifically here. He says to them, when you say I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos, you are speaking and living out of your human instincts. Acting out of these human instincts, he says, is childlike. Well, actually, even more than childlike, he said they are acting like infants. They must be fed milk, for they cannot handle solid food yet. They haven't matured enough in their faith. So you might recall, we've been going through 1 Corinthians now for a few weeks, and he says to them earlier that, I've been speaking in simple language because you're too young in your faith. You're not mature enough. You can't, you're not understanding it enough to speak in complicated kind of language. You can almost feel Paul's disappointment when they are, that they're still infants. And they're still not ready for that solid food of faith we can sense his frustration, too, I think, because they haven't matured in their faith. He taught them what they needed in order to mature, and then all this time later, so this letter would have, he's been gone for a couple of years, two, three years maybe, and yet here they are aligning themselves still with teachers other than Jesus. <clears throat> the main proof that Paul offers to us that they haven't matured is their incessant jealousy and quarreling. Hmm. I feel like you're being called on the carpet there by a, a parent that uh, he's pointing out what is going on and what is disturbing him and what is keeping them from maturing in their faith. They're bickering about whether they belong to Paul, whether they belong to Apollos. They're, they're taking sides, human leaders. They're not focused on Jesus. They're still acting out of their human instincts. Their allegiance is to one teacher or another, and it's really not about doctrine, it's not about theology, it's about human wisdom. The way these speakers, these teachers speak, the way they present themselves, that's what they're aligning to, not to Jesus. Paul reminds them that both he and Apollos are simply servants of the Lord. They are not the ones to be worshipped. They are doing what they've been called to do and they're fulfilling their call. Neither are extra special in and of their own right. 
They're doing what they've been called to do by God. So this is where we get in this gardening or agricultural um, metaphor. And he says, Paul planted. So Paul came first, introduced them to Jesus, introduced them to the gospel. Paul is watered. But it was God who gave the growth. Each of these phases is important and it's necessary. If Paul only planted and nothing else happened, there wouldn't be much growth. Similarly, watering without anything being planted, it's kind of a futile activity. What's most important in this gardening analogy is God. For God is the one that gives the growth. Paul was the original one, as I said, who came to Corinth and shared the gospel message of Jesus. He talked to people. He helped them understand how they could be people of God. He planted. Paul, of course, couldn't stay. He was a traveling missionary. And so he entrusted others to continue the teaching, to continue the encouragement. He needed people like Apollos to keep watering, to keep helping people to grow and to nurture their faith in Jesus. The work of both Paul and Apollos was necessary. But Paul knew and told them that it was God who deserved the credit for what was happening and the growth in them, that it wasn't him. Back in chapter 2, he talked about the importance of God's spirit and God's spirit working in them. So it's not about humans. I think Paul, having to revisit this a couple of times, just says how important it is and how troubling it is to him. I think there is great relevance for us in this message today. Prior to the pandemic, if we can remember back that long, Many churches were starting to go through changes, especially in the main line where our congregations were getting a bit older and we were seeing changes happening. Canadian culture is just not as Christian as it once was. And so we were seeing our congregations reflect this. The pandemic and us having to shut down, go online, make all kinds of changes, not be together for so long, accelerated what was happening, I would guess, by five, maybe ten years. I have yet to meet a church leader or hear a church leader talk, whether they are in a smaller congregation like Clarkson or they are in one of the big mega churches that isn't talking about how things have changed, how the challenges of getting people back together and how it's just difficult. It's happening everywhere. Some of the big mega churches, they've, you know, they're not doing as many services as they once did. So we're all facing the challenge of being back together of what it's like to be together, of getting volunteers. This is just part of the way things are, and everyone is feeling the pressure. For what seems like decades, and this has accelerated, I would say, since the pandemic and coming back, but as long as I can remember when I was an elder in London, there have been people talking about, there have been people writing about, there have been posts online and such about the magic bullet to grow churches. 
to bring the church back to its glory days. You know, if you just buy my program, this, that, and the other thing, and introduce that, all your problems will be solved. You know, what you really need is the hip young pastor with the skinny jeans and five kids. Got it, problem solved. If you'd only increase your online presence, there you go, problem solved. If you'd only change your music, if you'd only, if you'd only, you get the idea, right? None of these magic bullets worked before the pandemic, and they're not going to work after the pandemic. We're going through a time of transition. And the words that Paul wrote all those years ago to the people in Corinth show us what we need to focus on today. Our focus needs to be on Jesus. Our focus needs to let the Spirit work in and through us. We might be called to plant. We might be called to water. Each and every one of us are co-workers with God. We are gardening with God. And it is God who will give the growth. Might mean changes, might mean some different ways, but when we are aligned and abiding with God, we'll know the ways that God is leading us and God will give us the courage to make the changes, to take the steps that we need to make. The comforting part for us, it is not all up to us. It is not up to us to figure out what seeds do we need to plant specifically. Do we need this variety of Bible study or do we need that variety? God is going to bless the seeds that are planted in the Bible studies that we do. This has always been Christ's church. And it will always be Christ's church. We have the joy of gardening with God. And we're along for the ride and the adventure of what it will be, as hard as it is sometimes. Amen. I'm going to invite our music team to come on back up. One of the best ways that we can live this out and that we can give God God's rightful place and put us in our place as gardeners and help us to know how we are to garden is to abide with the Lord, to abide with Jesus, and to develop that relationship. And so we're going to sing now, Teach Me to Abide. We haven't done this song for a while, um, but it's pretty straightforward, so we'd invite you to stand as we sing this together. Lord, you are the vine, I am a branch, teach me to abide. Lord, I cannot do anything without you. Teach me to abide. For as long as I live, help me remain rooted in you, bearing fruit in your name. You are the vine, Lord, I will abide.
Lord, you are the vine, I am a branch, teach me to abide. Lord, I cannot do anything without you, teach me to abide. For as long as I live, help me remain rooted in you. but it was good to um, have it back in the rotation. So thank you very much for um, enter helping us to enter into that. Part of our response to God's generosity and God's love for us is our offerings of our time, our talent, and our monetary resources. We are not collecting the offering um, during the service, but there are offering plates at the front, at the back of the church there, and outside um, on the table beside Karen's office. And uh, you're welcome to leave an offering there, or certainly send by e-transfer or online donation. Let's pray a prayer of dedication for all of our offerings. Gracious and generous God, we bring our gifts to you in thanksgiving. Bless them and surprise us by all that the Holy Spirit can accomplish with them. Bless our lives too so that our choices will always honor you for Christ's sake. Amen. This morning we come with our prayers of the people and... Um, so I invite you to, we'll continue praying now. God of life and love, in spoken words and in the silence of our hearts, we give you thanks for all of life, for the grace you provide to creation in its diversity, and for your loving kindness, known in the details of our lives. Hear us, we pray, as we speak of matters on our hearts and minds this day. Now, God, where the church is divided by squabbling or deep disagreement, where Christians emphasize our differences instead of seeking unity in Christ, where we put energy into guarding tradition at all expense of honoring new life and relationships with our neighbors, Transform us and make all things new. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
where families are divided by old hurts or new tensions, where friendships have ended through misunderstanding or neglect, where relationships have been severed by betrayal or thoughtlessness, transform us and make all things new. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where countries are torn by war and conflict, where communities are divided by prejudice or unexamined privilege, where leaders provoke anger instead of building understanding and cooperation, transform us and make all things new. We lift up to you countries and people who are dealing with the effects of natural disasters. We are mindful of Alia's family who have suffered such great losses because of the earthquake, and we lift her entire family to you. We pray that our offerings, our gifts to them, will not only offer them very practical support, but help them to know that they are being held in prayer and with love by people here in Canada. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where the poor and the lonely find little support or comfort, where people are tired from overwork or pressured by rising costs, where workers fear for their jobs in the present or in the future, transform us and make all things new. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer where people suffer with pain, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, where loss marks the beginning and ending of every day, where young people fear for the future of the planet and their elders mourn the loss of what they once assumed would last, transform us and make all things new. Lord, we lift up to you all who are dealing with illness, those who are waiting for tests and the outcome of tests, those who are going through new treatment regim regimes, we lift them all up to you. And we continue to lift Andrew, Christine, and their family, praying that you will be with them and all others in times of uncertainty and challenge. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our source and Savior, in Christ you make all things new. And so united in one voice, we pray in the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are going to conclude our time of worship with one of Wendell Kimbrough's songs. We're going to sing, I'll Not Be Shaken. This is based on Psalm 62 that we read responsively earlier in the service. And I don't know about you, but this is the very first um, Wendell song that we started to learn here. And I actually can't read Psalm 62 anymore without hearing the chorus and without that going through my head. So it's really cemented that psalm into my heart. So. Let's, um, we'll just wait for the screens to come up and then we'll, uh, there you go, folks. Thank you. For God alone, I wait in silence. My soul is still before the Lord. He is my rock and my salvation, my fortress strong. I trust in Him. I'll not. 
not be shaken, I'll not be shaken, for all my hope is in his love. From God alone comes my salvation, I wait and trust his steadfast love. Put not your hope in gain of riches. Seek not your rest in empty wealth. The rich are weak, the poor are mighty. Who turn to God alone for help? I'll not be shaken. I'll not be shaken. For all my hope is in his love. From God alone comes my salvation. I wait and trust his steadfast love. Pour out your heart. To God our refuge and trust in Him to hear you cry. No other hope will never fail you. No other love will not run dry. I'll not be shaken. I'll not be shaken for all my. Worship, we go remembering that God is always with us and we can pour out our heart to God no matter what is happening in our lives. So go with that confidence and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and those that we love and pray for on this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ 